good day. We're at Leviticus chapter 20, verse, uh, I believe it was verse 14. I'll go ahead and run with it. And if a man take a wife and her mother, it is wickedness. They shall be burnt with fire, both he and they, that there be no wickedness among you. Notes. Now, the necessity of the Lord having to give these commandments and the warnings uh, portrays to us the glaring fact of man's total depravity. Verse 15. And if a man have sexual intercourse with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and you shall kill the beast. If a woman approach unto any beast and lie down there too, you shall kill the woman and the beast. They shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon them. Notes. It is so... Uh, it is so disgusting that the Word of God would actually have to address this, uh, all these sexual sins of such nature, but then again, God does actually, He has to, out of necessity, tell people that these things do not need to be going on. Verse 17, And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness. He shall bear his iniquity. Verse 18, And if a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness, which is her monthly period, and shall uncover her nakedness, he has discovered her fountain, and she has uncovered the fountain of her blood, and both of them shall be cut off from among their people. Notes. Uh, the monthly discharge of the female gender speaks of impurity and harks back to the original sin of Eve and to engage in intercourse at such a time in essence was a denial of the fall and its cause. Due to Christ and what he did at the cross this particular prohibition no longer applies at least in the sense that it did before the cross. Nevertheless, uh, it still should be held to in principle and for all <laughs> the obvious reasons. Verse 19. And you shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, nor of your father's sister. For he uncovers his near kin, uh, they shall bear their iniquity. Notes. All of this, as is obvious, pertains to incest, which was common among the surrounding nations. Verse 20. And if a man shall lie with his uncle's wife, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness, and they shall bear their sin. They shall die childless. Notes. This is obviously a great reproach. Verse 21. And if a man shall take his neighbor's wife, it is an unclean thing. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They shall be childless. Verse 22. You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them, that the land where I bring you to dwell therein spew you not out. Notes, the commandments of the Lord were to be the guiding structure of Israel and not the ways of the heathen nations which surrounded them. It is the same presently under the new covenant. And if it is to be noticed, a lot of these strict laws uh, would not be very... They would not be very well received right now, but back then, at that time, all these heathen nations were doing all these things, and God put very, very strict, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He put strict laws against them, I guess you could say, to try and prevent Israel from actually going into those things. Verse 23, And you shall not walk in the manners of the nations which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. Notes. In other words, God hates these sins uh, wherever it is found, but He does not necessarily hate. He does not hate the sinner at all. As a matter of fact, He died in a in an attempt to redeem them. All we must do is pick it up and run with it. Verse twenty four. But I have said unto you, You shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that flows with milk and honey. I, mm, pardon me. I am the Lord your God, which have separated you from other people. Uh, notes. This is carried over into the New Covenant, and as well with the Holy Spirit through Paul, stating basically the same thing in Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 and onward. 
The Lord here plainly says that one cannot at the same time uh, have milk and honey and then have sin at the same time. It's either going to be one or the other. Verse 25, You shall therefore put difference between clean beast and unclean, and between unclean fowls and clean. And you shall not make the souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creeps on the ground which I have separated from you as unclean. Uh, notes. Certain prohibitions were leveled against Israel that are not carried over into the new covenant because Israel was to be the womb of the Messiah, so to speak. Verse 26. And you shall be holy unto me, for I am the for I the Lord am holy, and have severed you from other people that you should be mine. Uh, notes Israel was to belong to the Lord and to belong to the Lord exclusively. It is the same with believers presently. And a good a good way I like to think about this is God separating His people. Imagine a crowd of five hundred thousand people in front of you, and one person who lives by this Levitical law. That one person is going to stand out. God wants His people to stand out. Verse twenty-seven. A man also or woman who has a familiar spirit or who is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. Notes. The greater gist of this verse is that Israel look exclusively to the Lord for leading and guidance and not to other means, especially the means of the powers of darkness. But sadly, uh, these things actually crept in and actually caused Israel to fall very, very flatly. Chapter 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the son of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people. But for his kin that is near unto him, that is, for his mother, and for his father, and for his son, and for his daughter, and for his brother, and for his sister a virgin, who is near unto him, which has had no husband, for her may be... May uh, let me say it again. For her may he be defiled. <clears throat> let me clear my throat. Notes. It meant that the priests were not to touch a dead body with the exception of their uh, very, very close relatives. Uh, both physical and spiritual death are the, the result of sin, and hence you see the prohibition here. Verse 4, But he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. Uh, notes, chapters 21 and 22, with great detail, uh, great detail, portray the divine requirements in reference to those who are priests unto God. Verse 5, They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Notes, the heathen did this whenever a loved one died, and you can certainly see these traditions held out in a lot of the cultures, especially in Asia and in some parts of Europe, even today. Verse 6, they shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God. For the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God they do offer. Therefore they shall be holy. Notes. In effect, they portrayed Christ and the cross. And for reasons that should be obvious. I think I've went over it a hundred times. Uh, verse 7. They shall not take a wife who is a whore or profane. Neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband. Notes. That's basically divorced. For he is holy unto his God. You shall sanctify him therefore, for he offers the bread of your God. He shall be holy unto you, for I, the Lord, will sanctify you, which sanctify you am holy. And we will have to pick up in Leviticus chapter 21, verse 9. Thank you very much.